What's going on everybody, Big C 90210 here from TeamSEO.com and the No Blueprints blog. Uh, today we're going to be I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on how to make a 7 days to die prefab um, all the way through from start to finish and yeah, I'm going to give you a nice walk through how to use HAL 9000's uh, prefab maker. So shout outs to HAL 9000 and Aussie Wombat for getting in and uh, making this awesome piece of kit so we're gonna to have to go to the seven days to die official forums you go into the modern section modding tools and there is Hal's prefab editor uh, so you download and you install the prefab editor um, and once you have installed it you should get a little window like this um, I'm just gonna minimize this so So in this, once you've updated the latest version, this is 0 0.30, uh, you go into settings and you set basic settings such as what your Steam name is and where your location of 7 Days to Die is. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about anything else, that will do. So, once you've set this, uh, you can go into 7 Days to Die and make a new game. Uh, we're going to be making a game called YouTube today. A couple of things you want to do. You want to set the difficulty to scavenger. Uh, you want to set enemy spawning to disabled. And you want to go down to the bottom under misc and you want to set cheat mode to on. Um, and then you just press start. I'm running the game windowed by the way just so I can drag it around for ease. But it's entirely up to you what you want to do. Okay, so now we're in game. The first thing you want to do as soon as you get in game is you want to press the tilde key, which is just above tab and beside one. This will open up the console. So while the console is open, you can type DM, which must be in lowercase, and press return. That will put debug mode on. So now that you've got debug mode on, you can go ahead and press F1. F1 will bring up the debug menu. Um, what I recommend you do is turn speed down to 1, which is like the time, and uh, set the time of day so that it's, say, mid-afternoon sometime. So, yeah, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, once you've got debug mode on, uh, the next thing you do is you fly to wherever you want to make your prefab. And what you can do is you can press G to toggle flying on and toggle flying off. Um, but an even faster way to get there, uh, we're going to make a prefab down here, is simply open your map, left click, uh, left drag to find where you want to go, and then right click on the map, and you will teleport there. So, now that we've teleported here, we've got ourselves a nice flat playing ground to work with, we're going to make our prefab. Now, I recommend for your first ever prefab, you make something above ground, something like a house or a shed or whatever. I mean, when you get slightly more advanced at this, you'll be able to make underground prefabs and stuff like that. But just for the purposes of simplicity, we're going to make a, we're going to make an above ground prefab. So, what we do now is we just get our tools of what we're going to make. Oh. Yeah, that'll do. And then we don't build. No, we don't build. So what we're going to build, we're not going to build. What we actually do is we alt and tab and we bring this over here. So what we have to do now is we have to go into the backup manager and our world is Navas game and the save game that we're currently working with is YouTube. So what we have to do is we have to add a player. So what's the Steam ID for the player? Well, I am Big C90210. I think it's a couple B, a couple C. I don't think it's case sensitive, but what the hell. So we click OK, and then we click on Big C, and we say Big C is admin. Claim size. Now, if you imagine when we get to the point where we want to export, we when we export this prefab, we have to stand in the middle of it, and then we kind of land claim in the same way that you would place a land claim block. And that kind of puts 
a, a radius around where we are and claims that area which we then export so you want to claim slightly more than where your prefab is just so you get everything in because you can always trim it down in the editor but this is going to be quite a small prefab so we're going to make it say 13 squares um, max claims I'd just leave that as one for now so the important thing is is once you've ticked is admin and you've made a claim size obviously the bigger prefabs only need a bigger claim size you need to press save player now when you press save player it'll say BBB reloading and BBB complete this is good so what we can do is we can move this over here uh, actually we can bring it back and just press close and then we can move this out of the way and then we can get back to the game so uh, yeah we're gonna make ourselves a little sandy house mm -mm. don't forget people if you uh, if you like this video if you find it informative if you learn something new leave me a comment or even subscribe that would be lovely uh, if you didn't like this video or if I forgot something or if I've just got something wrong please let me know that as well and I'll do my best to fix it um, yeah we're gonna just make some little walls and stuff be like be like the Bob Ross of the like outside the window be like the Bob Ross of seven days to die I have some happy little houses Then we're not going to make this too complicated. One other thing as well, as you see, how my mouse pointer is flapping round. If you get a mouse pointer that's kind of invading your screen, if you tap I and then tap I again, it disappears, um, which is rather handy. So, yeah, we've got the, the basics of our house there. I think I've made it one taller than it should have been, but what the hell. Um, let's put some windows in this. Uh, so, as you can see, this is the wrong... Well, you can you can press left-click to rotate what you want. Um, and you can rotate things in the editor afterwards. So, I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to put some more windows in. Oh, put that one the wrong way. Uh, actually, not bad. We'll, we'll fix that in the editor later on. And let's put some shingles down. Put some old green shingles with a corner. And flat bit. stand on an angle here. Is that right? No, that's not right. Tip for you is to always get a hundred gas and then pick it up, dump it in your inventory, and then get an auger or a chainsaw. Keep that just because as this game doesn't currently As this game doesn't currently support one click destroying when in creative mode, you have to auger through a lot of bits and bobs occasionally. Whenever you make mistakes. You can't always remove them in the editor, but just for simplicity, I thought I'd smash it out now.
what you generally find when placing these is that they tend to rotate clockwise. Not always though. Go. There we go. And there we go. So, we have a, a nice little house. Uh, let's place a door. So for that we'll press Z. Search for door. Uh, wooden door will do. And when you place doors, always aim at the floor with the door. And then that way the top half fills in automatically. If you're using the prefab editor, you have to put the bottom half and the top half in. But you can just use the same door piece. So, we've got ourselves this far. Let's put a little table in. Put a table down there. Bed down. And we'll put a sink down as well. Have the drawers facing forward. Now, when you right click on the sink, it'll have nothing in it. But when it makes it into the actual game, it will have stuff in it. It will spawn loot. Um, every so often. So yeah, that's just about it, really. Um, we've got a little house. We've also got a mistake in the house, which we're going to need to fix in the editor. Um, so yeah. So what we do now, since uh, we made ourselves an admin before, is we stand in the middle of where our prefab is. Um, so in that case, it's roughly here. And we press T which brings up the voice, uh, the chat thing, and you type BBB, um, flame, and then my name, which is Big C902 went on. And now it says, Big C902 was claimed in an area, they have complete. So, what we need to do now is we need to export this area that we've just claimed. And in order to do that, you open up the chat again and you go BBB X I think it's just C902 or no and the game will pause for a little second while it's exporting but as you can see there save completed big C902 or no exported now then we can quit the game and we can bring this menu over and we can up open the prefab editor. So what we need to do now is from the menu on the left, um, we press load exported area and the default save for these is your my documents folder, uh, seven days to die, saves, whatever the world name is, which in this case is Navas game, whatever the the game name is, which ours was called YouTube, and then you have block backup, and then users, and then whatever the username is, so I'm BigC90210. So here we can see BigC90210.ex. There's already a file in the prefabs folder, do you want to overwrite it to see? Yes. Yeah, I forget that. So here is our prefab. Now I'm just going to quickly zoom in a bit. So we can see what's going on. Um, now the first thing you you realize is that hold on a minute, this is fucking green. Green. This is this is my prefab. But what you have to imagine is that I'm gonna use this Toblerone as an example. Those nine squares that we just took are from the bottom of bedrock all the way up to the top of the sky, and obviously say this is ground level our prefab is sitting on top of ground level because it's a house so what we want to do is we want to take this section out so in order to do that we can use here which is the layers to go up through the layers of dirt so imagine we're digging through the ground and we go up to up oh, there we go 
one second, I've just realized. Here you have the list of whatever is on here. Whatever is on this layer, the materials will be here. So as you can see, A is orange, but a bit confusing, so we'll set A as white. So anything that's white is A in game. So what we can do is we can go down and we can find where the ground is. So here is the ground. And then one above ground, we've got lots of speckly bits. And you can clearly see the wall here and the door. So what you can do is you can click on here, which is an info tool. And you can click on the various things. And down here, it'll tell you what it is. So as you can see, you can see here, this is dead pine leaf. Everything that's this color brown is a shrub. There's some grass. And this is some other grass. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go, okay. So if this is the grass and stuff like that, then the layer below, this is obviously, the, this is obviously the dirt. This is the, what the fuck, wait. Where are you? Wait. What? What the hell that is? Um, so yeah. So we want to delete everything. Ground level and below. So in order to do that, we want to delete between layer 0, which is bedrock, and 60, which is this layer of ground. So we go prefab, remove layers, remove from 0 to 60. Go. Okay. So now, layer 0 is where our building begins. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of all of the sky above our building. So we go up through the layers and we can see after layer 5, there is just air. So it's important to cut out your prefabs and remove this air because it then means prefabs can go above it. Whereas if you didn't cut the air out, then it would mean no prefabs could go above this prefab. So if we press this button here, we can go to the top of the sky, which is layer 194. So we know that between layers 5 and 194, there is just air. So again, remove layers 5 to 194. So this puts us back where we were before on layer zero which is our new ground uh well it's the beginning of the prefab and we have one two three four four layers and obviously that makes our prefab pretty simple so the next thing we want to do is we want to shave the prefab down so that it's only this part here the actual building because we're not bothered about the grass outside so what we can do is we can click prefab, uh, remove left column. If you notice, there's F keys bound to this. So we can either click F5 and that removes the column from the left. Uh, sorry, we can either click from the menu or we can just tap F5. Right column is F6. So we can remove them too. F7 is from the top. So we remove them too and then F8 has removed the bottom three. So what we're left now is, we're left with our building. And there's some other stuff outside. So, here we didn't want this grass to be here. What we can do is, is we can just replace this grass with air. And in order to do that, click edit. We can either choose from something which is already on this layer, or we could just type in here, air. So let's left click and get rid of this air. Uh, let's get rid of this grass and replace it with air. Um, let's for the sake of it, let's pick an air conditioner unit and let's put an air conditioner unit outside. So just by left clicking and then left clicking again, put an air conditioner unit outside. So we can see the various parts house the sum in purple which if you click on them you can see that it's window and you can also see that its rotation is down north down north down north whereas if we go down a layer we've got down north down
down east and down north. And then if you remember in game, if we just go back up a layer, there was a window which was pointing the wrong direction. So we can fix that by clicking on down north and changing it to down east. So now we know that that window is in the right direction. Now, some of the more advanced features of this editor is that you can do things like copy and paste, or you can even do things like fill. So what we can do here is say if we wanted to get some shingles, Uh, have a look. Shingles wood snowy. So say we wanted to fill this section here with shingles wood snowy. You would make sure you are on edit mode. You would pick shingles wood snowy. And you would hold down the middle mouse button. And you will drag across. And you can see that there's a red area filled up. When you release that red. When you release the middle mouse button. It changes, so that is how you fill. Another handy feature is being able to copy and paste. So in order to do that, you click on copy, and say you wanted to copy this air conditioner and put it over here. You would middle mouse click and drag over this area, and then you can right click and you can paste it here here and here. Now say if you realize that oh dear I didn't really want to do that you could easily copy it out with something like air. So we're, we're gonna get these three blocks of air and you can right click and then we've just pasted air over the top and in theory just deleted that air conditioner unit and we can do the same here. Now what you can also do is you can copy and paste vertically. So you're not just copying the air conditioner, but you can copy, say, something that was on top of the air conditioner. So in order to demonstrate that, we are going to put a oil barrel. We're going to go up a layer. And we're going to go to edit. And we're going to put an oil barrel here. Why is it picking blue for everything? Really? If you don't like the colors, by the way, if the colors are hard to... Choose, uh, hard to tell the difference between them. You can cl click on it, click color, pick a nice vibrant color that contrasts with it, and now all of your oil barrels will be pink. So we have a air conditioner unit, and on top of that air conditioner unit, it has an oil barrel. Now, say we wanted to copy both of those things in one go, we would say copy, but in the layers, we would say two, so it will copy here and whatever's above it. So again, we dra drag over it with the middle mouse button held down, and then we right click where we want it to go. We can paste it over here. So now when we go up a layer, we can see it's pasted the oil barrel as well. This tactic is very, very handy for things like, just as an example, a castle. So you could make one section of castle and then you can, like a, a pillar or something like that and then you can copy and paste it multiple times it makes for very very fast development of prefabs so um just trying to think of what else we could learn from here uh you can rotate the prefab um and you can pretty much do whatever you like with it really so what we are going to do now is we're going to place it in the game. So we can add prefab at player location. So say we're back in the game and we've made this. We want to Place it over here. Uh, world Navas game. Ah, nope, right. Okay, we'll just do this the easier way. So, 
in game say we wanted to place this prefab here we would open up the console just like we did before and we would type alpha lima p for pigeon and then what will happen is that it will give us some coordinates so we need to quickly jot this down which i have a sticky note so we have seven two let's say seven two two sixty one minus 1013 now this is my position on the map this is my longitude uh, this is basically like how high I am from bedrock and this is my latitude um, pretty much so back in the prefab editor we now need to save this prefab and give it a name. So what we're going to do, uh, oh, one more thing, by the way, guys, if you were to put a light, say you wanted to put uh, a light inside of the house. Um, first off, you would find light. Ceiling light. And you have to be in edit mode. Pick your ceiling light. This is on top of the roof. Well, this is the actual roof level, so we're going to go inside the ceiling level. So this is this is like the roof. You will put your light down, and then when you click on it with info, you will see that you have meta information here. And you will see that by default the light is off, but you can set it as lit. And that will mean you have a light inside your building which is lit. Um, What's also worth noting as well is that when you copy things, so when you copy this light, it copies the metadata as well. So now when I'm pasting, I've now got two lit lights, um, which is quite handy. Uh, one other thing is that meta is used for doors as well. So here is a door. And we can see the meta for it is closed. So we can click on that and we can set it as open. A door will bug if one half is set to open and one half is set to closed. So we should probably go up a floor. And then we should probably set that door as open as well. So it doesn't bug. So now we need to save this prefab. Uh, easiest thing to do is save as um, and you have to go to wherever you've saved the game at and in the data folder there is a prefabs folder and we are going to call it YouTube Tut YouTube Tutorial that's what our building is going to be called so we've now just saved our prefab so second can you add it? No, we haven't. Um, in order to do this manually, what you can do is you can go to wherever your Steam is installed. Steam apps, common, seven days to die, uh, data, worlds. So we're putting this in Naves again. And in the nav in the world folder there is a file called prefabs so you double click on that and you open it up and inside here you have all of the prefabs that are in the world so what we're going to do is we're going to copy an existing prefab and we're going to add it to the bottom And what we're going to do is we're going to change the name of the prefab to be what we just saved our prefab as. So it's YouTube Tut, I believe. And the position is the coordinates. So 7, 2, 2. 61 minus 1000 
and 13. Rotation means you can rotate your prefab as you're deploying it. Um, you have basically have 0, 1, 2, and 3 for 0, 90 degrees 1, 180 degrees 2, and then 270 degrees 3. So we can just leave rotation as 0. Uh, I just want to double check that I did in fact save that as YouTube tut. Um, have a quick save as YouTube tut. Yes, I did indeed. So now we can click file and save. So what we can do now is we can make a new game. Actually, we don't even have to do that, to be honest. What we can do is go back into the prefab editor and we can say world navs game youtube clear all regions what this will do is it will reset the regions in game so it means when we continue our game our prefab should be in it there's the oil barrel and as you can see, there's an oil barrel on top of the air conditioner. Um, yeah, as you can see, the door's not open for some bizarre reason, and it's bugged. So I'll have to go back to that and work out why. And what you can see, though, is that we have lights that work. So that is a rather win. And we can go on the roof once we type DM. We can fly on the roof and we can see that the blocks that we changed before have worked as well. So that is the fundamentals of how to make a prefab. So say if we now realized, oh shit, A, we messed up the door and B, we've now messed up the roof. We could simply escape, quit the game. Open up our prefab. Um, so, just as an example, say you were coming back to this, you would open up your prefab editor, go file, open in memory, I find is the fastest, and it lets you use more advanced features such as the copying and pasting. And if you notice as well, it's now picked up the coordinates of where it is in the game. Um, so, we can go back up the layers, and what we can do is because we're very clever at this now, we can go info. What is this brick? It's shingles old. Ah, well, we'll pick shingles old, go into edit mode, and we'll click and drag across. And Bob's your uncle, we've just fixed the roof. And oh, I don't like that barrel sitting there anymore, so let's replace that barrel with some air. And yeah, we'll just keep that, keep that door closed. Whatever we've done, it doesn't like it. So we'll put that back to being closed and we'll save. So now that we've saved, you have to click World Navas Game YouTube, clear all regions. And then when you click on continue game and you go back in, any changes to your prefab should now have just been made. So now when we go in, hopefully this door shouldn't be fucked up anymore. We the door works again. Um, oh, the oil barrel has gone. And last but not least, whoop, yeah, last but not least, eh, the roof's no longer broken. So, you can, it's basically just a game of going backwards and forwards, getting used to how to make things inside of this editor, and um, yeah, just going backwards and forwards and testing how to make your prefab. Um, what what's quite cool is is that you can import prefabs into other prefabs so say like say we wanted this house um we could then bring this house into another prefab and use it the other thing which is quite cool is that uh if we open up that prefabs.xml file we can use this prefab as many times as we like so if we copied and pasted it, and then whoop, we copied and pasted it, changed the position by say 20, 
and set the rotation to one. File save. And then come out of game. Because you have to be you have to be out of the game when you clear the regions. That is one important thing. So now when we continue the game, we should have two houses. And there they are. One perfectly 20 squares away from the other. And did I rotate it? Yeah, I did rotate it. Rotated 90 degrees. So there it is. Lovely jubbly, perfect carbon copy of that one, but rotated 90 degrees. If you have a look in Diazville, you'll see that this technique's been adopted a lot, which is how you get a lot of repeated um, repeated buildings and stuff like that. But it does mean that you can use this to make collections of buildings rather quickly. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that you guys should probably be knowing, but I think that is just about it. Um, so yeah, if you find that your prefab is like sunken into the ground or something like that like if it's if it's a square lower than it should be which is sometimes what's the case just just tweak this by one like if you find that your prefab sunk into the ground a square lower than it should be um simply load this up or load up the the prefabs i'll, I'll show you what the what the issue looks like so i'll set that to 60. Because uh, position in prefabs can be quite difficult when you, when you're not used to it. Uh, world Navas game. We are all regions, and then continue. So one of our prefabs should be on ground level, and the other one, the original one, should be sunk into the ground a bit. Oh dear. There we go, that is what happens sometimes. Again, if you've loaded up DM and you have typed LP, you can see that the middle coordinate is ground level. So, what this means is, is say later down the line, we wanted to put this prefab on top of this mountain, and we typed in LP, Oop. And we typed in LP, you'll see that ground level is actually 81 here. So in order for this prefab to sit on top of the ground and not be sunk in the ground, we'd have to change the middle coordinate as well to 81 so that it's not stuck in the floor. Well, I think that just about uh, wraps up this video. There's nothing else I can think of pretty much apart from uh, give it a try. Um, the rotation of blocks can sometimes be a bit confusing, um, but a lot of the time it's just a case of seeing how it turns out. And then, uh, like if you imagine this door is down west, um, so so yeah, pretty much it just it just takes a bit of practice. Um, but yep, yeah, this is a uh, big C Nano two from. 90210 from teamseo.com and the No Blueprints blog. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Thank you very much.